What's up everybody? Welcome to the new shop. You guys haven't seen this, but it's completely remodeled. We flipped it. We pimped this garage, if you want to call it that. Anyway, don't know when that video will be, either before or after this one. I don't know, but anyway. So, today I'm going to be making a styrofoam cutter. I'm going to be cutting two inch thick pink insulated board styrofoam to make a box for a cold fusion experiment. So I want to put my cold fusion experiment in a containment where I can sort of control the temperature. I may even actually put in some sort of a temperature controller and actually control the temperature in the chamber, however, uh, or in the box. However, I don't know if I'm going to do that. It's just something I can play with. But I'm going to build a styrofoam cutter so I can cut styrofoam. All right, I don't want to use a table saw because then I got styrofoam pieces flying around everywhere. Um, I like the hot, the hot knife method. I've made one in the past when I was actually a very young kid. So I'm going to actually make another one today. Now I thought about making a handheld hot knife that I could just attach a piece of wood okay, to my styrofoam and just run it along that and that would make my cut. However, I think I'm going to go ahead and make one that's a tabletop version that'll cut at least uh, probably two feet deep. That way I can cut any side of the sheet that I want and then I'll just have a jig set up where I can move the guide rail and run this through there. So that's what I'm going to actually do. So that's what this video is about. We'll see how it goes. Let's get started. Alright, so for this project I am just going to use whatever I can find. Uh, I'm not going to purchase anything. I'm going to use whatever I have on hand. I'm going to try to make this a single day project, knock it out in one day. I don't want to spend any more time than that because I could probably buy one, but I want to make one because that's more fun. So let's see what we got around the shop. Alright, so I've got some pipe, some stainless, some other things um, down here and a, a lot of pipe. I got a lot of copper, some plastic. We're just going to pick out what we think we need out of this stockpile. And uh, then I'm going to see if I can find some wood. I believe there'll be some wood here today from a different project someone else is working on. So I may have to uh, jack a, hijack a couple of pieces from them. So we'll see. But uh, we'll start here. My control transformers, there's a whole bunch of them. I have a lot of them. And uh, I will basically be picking what I think works out of here. So there's an overview of what I'm starting with. All right. So here's the catenol wire. I've got catenol A1, which is uh, about half a millimeter in diameter. And I've got uh, catenol D, which is about uh, 0.23 millimeter, it's saying here. So this stuff's a little bit finer, a little bit smaller. You can see the, the size difference. Uh, this might actually be easier to get hot, but it might break easier. So this might be better because I can stretch it tighter and make it more straight and yet still put some current through it. But the thing is, is I got to balance the current so I have to do a little calculation and uh, find out what voltage I want do a little test and see uh, see how much current and voltage I can put into this find a transformer to match it. Alright so here you can see I'm using a one and a half inch and one and three quarter hole saw. The pipe I already cut and uh, didn't actually film that but I cut it and I wanted to fit it in this uh, four by four so I cut two times, one with the big hole saw, one with the small one, and it fit in there and left the core. So I wanted to leave the core because I wanted to actually put screws all the way through the outside, through the pipe, and through the core. Uh, I actually think the core may have broken loose, but that's okay because, uh, you know, whatever. So I did that all the way around. And then I uh, drilled a hole here for the wire that's going to be coming out. And then here I run the wire through the pipe and get it all set up, get it pulled through, and then go ahead and use some uh, plastic uh, PVC cement to actually adhere that together. Now, um, I don't know if I did this in the right order. It might have been better to glue these pieces together so it would be lined up better, and then uh, you could screw it down because I had to try to bend that thing around. So here I uh, drill a hole and I use a step bit because if you use another bit it might break the plastic so if you use a step bit that works out. I went all the way through so I had a small hole and a big hole and um, then I went ahead and glued the top pipe uh, pipe together and yep drilled the hole already okay so here I'm using a square to square up uh, the bottom because I didn't have a plumb bob I wanted it in an exact position so I went ahead and 
uh, figured out where that exact squareness position was with the top, drilled that hole and busted it out. I went ahead and removed the core here. And then here I'm taking a um, half inch drill bit and I'm actually drilling into the uh, place where I drilled the big hole so that I could slide uh, the next piece in that hole. So here I drilled one in the side because I have a set screw that I'm going to be putting in the bar that goes in that other side. So I drilled the second hole. So here is actually the bar. You can find these at your local store. These are a bus bar, an electrical bus bar you find in uh, bus bar uh, or in uh, breaker panels. And no normally the neutral and the grounds always go to this bus bar. But I had a few left over. I had taken out of some stuff. So I went ahead and, uh, and used this for the bottom connector. You can see in there how I drilled that one one way, one the other way, and then the big hole, and that's the big hole is to get rid of the heat. So I inserted this guy and uh, tapped it in there and then uh, set the set screw and pulled it back out, and you can see that I aligned the hole right down in there so that I can put the actual uh, screw in there and, and actually get in there and tighten it. Because later I'm going to be putting a little stud in there. So here I put it in there, and uh, that worked out really well. Uh, everything's really nice and tight in there and the aluminum is going to act like a heat sink so that's going to be even better perfect easy peasy alright so next I uh, grabbed some uh, wire loom attachment thingamabobs that I took out of old equipment and kept and attached the wire along the side here alright so here I'm using a brass bar uh, or I'm using a hacksaw to cut a brass bar I believe that's a 1 8 inch brass bar you can find these at your local hardware store and then I cut an angled slot all right, in that brass bar which you'll see in this little clip here so I cut an angled slot not all the way through but over half all right, and then I took a drill bit something that uh, was just big enough to put my catenol wire through um, and drilled a hole into the brass bar down into where I cut the slot this is actually how I'm gonna hold the wire in spot you can see how it goes through there Oh yeah, so I opened up the cat and all wire and uh, mm, yeah, didn't think this one through and set the spool down. <laughs> yeah, I just let it go. I have to spend probably an hour just winding that back the way it originally was. It's a hundred foot. So here I'm inserting it into the little brass bar that I just cut. And um, wrapped it around there and that's how I'm actually holding the wire in, the top and the bottom. So I went ahead here and did the uh, set the bottom in there, measured the top, cut the wire, wrapped the top, and I'm using another an electrical connector here as my top part. So here I'm using a uh, U-shaped connector and attaching the wire there to the uh, thing and tightening it down. Again, that little connector is actually another electrical piece that you can actually find at your hardware store. I get a better close-up later. Doing some testing here, and uh, here we go. All right, so here we are. We are testing for constant current, constant voltage. And I'm gonna set the current at five amps, which gives us just under 11 volts. And you can see the wire is actually glowing red hot. So cutting slow, this would work perfectly fine. Um, we could crank it up, if I bring it up a little bit more it gets a little more orange if you get it too hot it's gonna break that's why I like this stuff and it and if you get it too hot too it'll stretch so you want to make sure you don't put too much tension here to stretch it keep it keep it at the right uh, uh, at the right setting so let's bring it to about five amps again it's a bit touchy five amps so I need to find me a, a power supply that's let's say 12 volts and I should be be approximately right where I want to be just gotta make sure it can handle the, the amperage so at 12 volts and this is DC by the way we could try AC too and see what happens 5.4 amps at 12 volts is, uh, is red hot and this is the wrong kind of styrofoam that I'll be cutting, but...
you get the idea. So there you go. That took me a tiny bit of time. I'm going to add some uh, feet to it and a guide to it, and we'll uh, see what kind of power supplies we can connect to it. But just wanted to test it first. All right, so here I'm adding the feet. Now, I already uh, drilled holes in the uh, bottom of this wood, and then uh, so I didn't split the wood. So here I'm taking a uh, 4x4 and cut it in half. I could have just used a 2x4, but didn't have one. And then I went ahead and drilled uh, some uh, holes in a 1-inch uh, by half-inch, 6-inch uh, long little piece of wood there. Squared it up, screwed it onto the bottom of that 2x4-ish piece of wood. And then I held it up to the 4x4 and put the other one on there. And this is acting as my, my slide. So everything's nice and square. And um, I have something to put my, my uh, styrofoam against. Here I decided to draw 1 inch increments on the uh, 4x4. I was going to inlay a ruler or something, but it was too late. So I just grabbed a marker. Everything in black is 1 inch increments. And everything in uh, blue is half inch increments. And then I went ahead and marked uh, 1 through 24 on inches here. I let, didn't mark the half inch marks. And uh, I did the top because the bottom gets covered up by that wood, but yeah, thought that one through. So that's how I'm actually using it as my backstop, and I don't have to break out the tape measure. So here I'm actually drilling holes in the side of these uh, little pieces of wood so that I can um, uh, set this in there later. So I ran the screws in and out, in and out, in and out to kind of make it loose because I want to be able to use a screwdriver. So I drilled holes and then ran the screws in there, but they're tight, uh, so they're not loose in there. So here's the transformer I ended up picking out. I am using AC, not DC. So this is 120 volt in, 12 volt, 8.75 amp out. Perfect. So here I'm just testing it, uh, laying it on the bench and testing it and seeing what happens. And uh, it seemed to work just fine, so I moved forward with uh, adding the next piece. So this is one of those moments whenever I uh, didn't quite think this one through. I told you earlier I should have used a step bit. Well, I tried to add the switch here and drill a hole here, and you know, I had one of those, oh, son of a gun, got to be kidding me moments. Freaking broke the pipe. I mean, I'm using scrap, right? I'm using scrap, and this happens. <laughs> so I just went ahead and drilled the other one and busted that out, too. Yeah, that wasn't real smart. So use a step bit, and you can get away with this. So I tried to glue it back together with PVC cement, but that just didn't quite work right. Um, I'll show you how I fixed it in the end of this video. You'll see it. I tried to use super glue and that was a little better. So you tried to use a hacksaw to cut that out and that didn't quite work. So I went ahead and got the Dremel tool out. Dremel tool works pretty well. Uh, put a smaller bit on it and cut all that out so I could fit my switch. I wanted a switch in there because I wanted to be able to turn it on and off on the fly. Drilled a hole in the back, fed the wires through, tried to super glue it again. Um, so the wires come out the back actually there. Drilled another hole for the transformer. And again, using the step bit, smart time, smart this time. And I mounted the transformer on the back with some rubber bushings in between there. Uh, that actually worked really well. And then I went ahead and uh, crimped all the wires together and used some more of those uh, tie downs and screwed them all on the whole thing. And well, that was pretty much it. Pretty straightforward and simple. All right, well here it is, from thought to finished product. About five hours this took me. and. Uh, there's a few things I'm going to add, but this is pretty much it. The only thing I'm going to add is possibly wood across here to act as a table. One here, one here. But I'm okay with the way it is, and I did it this way for a particular purpose, so let me give you an overview. Okay, so this is it. This is the uh, transformer. Got a switch. My wires run through the pipe, through the bottom of the pipe. And uh, that connector down there, connector up here. I did mark this, as you can see, and uh, that way it gives me some dimensions. This is my backstop guide. I can show you briefly how that works. All right, so I put this uh, angle iron on the bottom with just one screw. And I did that because I wanted to be able to take it off and actually mount it one on one side, one on the other. And then I can take my guide off right here and I can mount it right there. And uh, if I put these on here, then I can do the same thing. So everything is actually only the width of a 4x4 down here. Um, and that's so I can store it. So let me show you how this thing actually works. All right, so if I had a little more time, and I would be using this a lot more often, I would have engineered this a little different. However, this is exactly what I've got. Some 1x1s or 1x1s. And I cut, uh, basically just use a 2x4, but I cut a 4x4 in half. So basically you just 
put it on whatever mark you want. You want 14. Set it at 14. And just ever so lightly screw these four screws in. And that's it. Now it's locked into place. So that's an easy way to mount. It's got four screws so it can't rock this way. Cut your stuff. You know, you may only use this once a year. I, I built one like uh, almost 10 years, probably 12 years ago, and I've only used it like when I built it because it was fun. But I really only plan on using this like once right now to cut this box I'm going to be building out of styrofoam. Other than that, it's kind of just for fun. So, plug it in. And uh, it was on, so I'll flip it on. Wire will be getting hot. And then, this is my test subject. Then I can cut styrofoam. Okay, sorry. So, I don't have any money to spend on background music. So, you know, if you guys make music, let me know and I'll incorporate it in my videos. Just shoot me an email. Really. Boom chicka 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 Ta-da! Alright, well there you go. One key note here. I do not have a safety feature for shorting. However, I'm always going to be plugging into a power strip that does. So, remember, if you plan on plugging it right into the wall with only like a 30 amp breaker, you might want to think about putting like a 6, 8, or 10 amp breaker in the line here. I just didn't have one. So, this is built with nothing but junk I had laying around the shop. About a five hour process just because of some of the problems. I did end up breaking this pipe and uh, I actually just grabbed another pipe that was a little bit bigger, cut it, and uh, slid it around here and glued it in place. So, that was kind of a problem, but I think it'll be fine. So your spring tension actually comes from from the pipe here. That's why that has to be strong. This is not even glued in place up here. It's just floating, but uh, I think it'll be fine. The only thing I need to try is possibly um, making sure, running this for a long time and making sure that none of this gets super hot. This actually feels quite hot, so I may just stick uh, like a heat sink on here or something because all the heat rises and it makes this hot. If it melts this plastic, that's no good. So I'm, I'm going to do a long-term ru test run and see what happens, but I think it'll be fine. So there you go. I guess that's a, another rustic custom styrofoam cutter. Alright, so here it is. A couple photographs for you. I'm quite pleased with the way this turned out, considering I just used a bunch of junk laying around. Um, I wish I didn't break that upper pipe right there, but you know. Uh, anyway, so I'll be up. Uh, I'll be. I'll be little bit That's exactly what I meant to say. So I'll be upcoming some video thing, Bobs, and building the actual box. So I'll post those videos in the description once I get them actually done, so you can see this thing in action. There's that connector. You can find those at your local store, hardware store. Alright, so the last edition, I'm going to take some UHMW tape and put it on that slide, and that's it. So, peace out. God bless.